let's continue to solve quadratic equations uh, by factoring. And I decided to choose one here where the coefficient in front of the x squared term is not a 1, so that we could review that, that process of factoring. So I've got a 3 in front of the x squared term. So if I want to get this factored correctly the first time, right away, with no questions asked, then I use what's called the AC method. So I'm looking for two numbers whose product is 3 times a negative 20 or a negative 60. Product is a negative 60. And I want those two numbers to add to be the middle coefficient, in this case, a negative 7. Okay. If it, if it doesn't come to me quickly or doesn't come to me clearly, you know, real fast, then I just go right away with using 1 times 60. And for these two numbers to add to be a negative number, but multiply to be a negative number as well, one of these two has to be negative. I'm going to make the bigger one negative so that when I add those, that gives me, in this case, it gives me a negative 59. And I want them to add to be a negative 7. So that's not it. So then I'll go and I'll say, wow, this 2 go into the number 60 30 times, and I'll stick the negative sign on it. Doesn't look like that's it. wonder if 3 divides into the number 60. Yeah, 20 times. I wonder if 4 goes into 60. I think that goes in 15 times. I wonder if 5 goes into the number 60. That goes in 12 times. You know, we're not always as fortunate where um, the number that we're uh, looking to find two factors for is divisible by practically every integer as we go on out. You know, that doesn't always happen. But 5 times 12 is 60, and I'm going to put my negative sign here, and I think I've hit it. I think 5 and a negative 12 add to be a negative 7. So remember, we factor this by grouping. We're going to replace this middle term with a 5x and a minus 12x. But Pat likes to put the minus 12 first. I like to put the minus 12x first and then the 5x so that when I have four terms here, when I bring down my minus 20 and I bring down my 3x squared, I like to avoid the scenario where I have a minus sign in front of my third term, if I can. So when the signs are opposite, I put the minus sign here and the plus sign here so that when I group this, I don't have to think about factoring a negative number out. My greatest common factor here is a 3x. My greatest common factor here is a 4. I'm sorry, it's a 5. Um, just trying to keep you on your toes. And then I'll need an x minus 4 here. And if these match, I write those down once, and the other factor will be this 3x plus 5. Whew, I finally have this in its factored form, and now I'm ready to use the zero product rule. I think I'm going to take it over there, so I'm going to erase this, this list. Hopefully you've got a, a copy of that. So the zero product rule says to take the factors, they are x minus 4, and set that one equal to zero, and take the 3x plus 5 and set that equal to zero, and then solve these for x. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides, and then here I'm going to subtract 5, and then I'm going to divide by 3. So one of the answers is a negative 5 thirds, and the other answer is a positive 4. Let's go ahead and check both of these. So I just think checking with fractions would be a, maybe a helpful experience for you. So I'm going to erase my factoring work. Those are my two solutions. And I'm running out of a little bit of space, so I want to keep my original problem. And I want to check. So I'm going to check the easy one first. Um, I'm going to check x equals 4. So in this problem, I'll have 3 times x squared x squared, so 4 squared, minus 7 times whatever x is, x is 4, minus the 20. And I want to see if I get a true statement once I've checked this out. Order of operations says to do the exponents first, not 3 times 4, don't give me that as 12. Do 4 squared, which is 16. I'll come back to this, I could have done it just now, but I'm going to do the multiplication next. So working from left to right, that product is 48. This product is 28. And then again, uh, 48 minus 28 is 20. And is 20 minus 20 equal to 0? 
and I can say yeah. So x equals 4 works. Let's check that fraction of a negative 5 thirds. I'm going to have to erase this as well so I can get that in. I'll, I'll give you a minute to maybe catch up with me. I'm going to try this negative 5 thirds for x in the original problem. So actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and put a negative 5 over 3 in here everywhere I see x. Be very careful. You've got to square this first. A negative 5 thirds times a negative 5 thirds, you just multiply straight across, is a positive 25 over 9. There is a 3 out in front here. If you need to put it over 1 so that you keep it up in the numerator, so you take care of that correctly, that would be great. Even this, this is 7 over 1. And, and I'm going to go ahead and multiply it, because I'll, I'll multiply this, I'll multiply that, and I'll do the subtraction. I'm going to take this negative times this negative and write it as a positive, and 7 times 5 is 35 over 3. So, you know, I was a little premature, because order of operation says to multiply working left to right, and I haven't done this yet. When I multiply this, let's go ahead, instead of calling it 75 over 9, let's go ahead and say that 3 goes into here once and into there three times. And so what we have now here is 25 thirds, and oh good, uh, 35 thirds, those have common denominators, so I'm allowed to add those. Let's see what those are. 25 and 35 adds to be 60 over 3. I'm going to need to take this over here. So I've got 60 over 3 minus 20, and I want to know if that's a true statement, and 60 over 3 is 20, and 20 minus 20 is equal to 0. It's hard to do checks with fractions, um, but we can, and that's how you would go about it. To turn that into a decimal number is not very exact, plus it's, a re it's got a repeating decimal. It's a negative 1.666666, and so to try to stick that in for x, you're going to have some error as you round it off somewhere. Let's stop here, and I'll We'll continue with solving quadratic equations in our next segment.